Hello, everybody. We are live right now with Michael Linklater, pro three on three basketball player from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. He's here to answer any questions, as well as most importantly, he is here to share his story. Uh, he is currently ranked number one in the Americas in the world. He is ranked number nine. So that's pretty inspiring just to say that, Michael Linklater. Tell us your story. Let's start there. Yeah, um, well, first of all, thanks for having me out here. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, my story really begins, uh, I always like to start my story before I was born. Mm -hmm. Because my grandmother who, you know, with, with when you trace your ancestry line, she's the reason why I'm here. And it started with her because that's how my journey began. My grandmother died years before I was born. And that caused for my parents, sorry, my mother, to be adopted off into part of the 60s school. So because my grandmother struggled with alcoholism, it caused my mother to be put up with her siblings for adoption. So she ended up getting adopted off into the States. And so out in the States, she ended up uh, getting pregnant and having me out there. And she had never been in contact with family back here for a number of years. So it was my great aunt who kind of reached out to look for my mother. Mm -hmm. And her name is Maria Linklater. And when she had got in contact with my biological mother, whose name's Mildred, her adopted last name is Sabine, okay. um, you know, she found out that she was pregnant. So she ended up going to labor, having me in the United States. So I was born in Trenton, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people don't know that. But we're originally from Thunderchild. That's where we descend from. That's our line. Yeah. It just happened that my mom was out there, mm -hmm. part of the 60s school. So when we were out uh, out there, just born, came back to came back to Canada. You know, a few days after I was born. So I've been living with Marie and Walter Linklater uh, as, since I was ten days old. Mm -hmm. So Thunder Bay, Ontario, is where they were living at that time when I came back to Canada. Yes. And there is where you know my mother was struggling with addictions at that time. Mm -hmm. So understanding, you know, the struggle that my mother was going through, Maria offered to take care of me. Mm -hmm. You know, she told my mom that she would take care of me until she got back on her feet. Mm -hmm. So to this day, my mother still struggles with alcoholism. Um, you know, it's been a huge uh, struggle, a part of her life and things that she went through. Mm -hmm. So she really struggles. And uh, Maria and Walter, you know, I grew up calling them mom and dad. So that's who I, I call mom and dad. I've never met my biological father. I don't know who he is or what he is. Yeah. And Maria and Walter, when I came into their lives, really gave me a, a strong sense, a strong value and emphasis on our culture. Mm -hmm. You know, they were both participants in the residential school systems and what helped them kind of deter from the path of alcoholism and drugs and going down that road was their culture. Mm -hmm. So they understood and growing up, seeing a lot of people that my family has helped, you know, the, the common denominator is everybody who's gone through trials and difficulties you know I've seen firsthand with my own eyes when they come back to realize who they are right their cultural identity learning their spirituality you know it really gives them a sense of uh, guidance you mm -hmm. know and it gives them something to fall back on so that's what I was raised with you know going to ceremonies as a kid you know still having long hair always having that and understanding the importance of our history and our culture mm -hmm. You know, so that being said, I grew up, we moved to Saskatoon when I was uh, nine, turning 10, and I went to St. Mary's Community School, which is considered the hood. Mm -hmm. You know, and there I had a lot of friends who struggled too. Like yeah. I've seen the social issues that they dealt with. With yeah. my household, I didn't have some of the things that they were dealing with because mm -hmm. there was, our house was drug and alcohol free. Mm -hmm. You know, so growing up in that community, I was still able to thrive because, you know, what I was being taught at home. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's a lot of families and kids out there that don't have that support from home. Mm -hmm. You know, so I always do my best to encourage them because um, one of the things that I always teach my own children is that, you know, we're in charge of our own lives. There's going to come a yeah, yeah. day where our children are going to grow up and have to make that decision on their own and we're not going to be there as parents. Mm -hmm. So. You know, for to, to understand the power of choice that we have, yeah, yeah. you know, so I made the choice that I was going to abstain from drugs and alcohol my entire life. And to this day, you know, I'm going to be 34 next month mm -hmm. and I've never touched a drop of alcohol or experimented with any type of drug. You know, and that's something I take really, uh -huh. really um, in, in as like, you know, one of my greatest accomplishments. So, you know, staying true to that and then finding sports. Sport was just something with me, like I really struggled academically in school. 
but sports kept me focused and I understood that, you know, if I wanted to excel in sports that I needed my education, Yeah. you know, and then as I started getting older and realizing the importance of education, mm -hmm. you know, I was able to stick through it and, you know, go through five years of university. So, um, I haven't got a degree yet, but that is on my goal and bucket list. I am going to, you know, graduate with a, with a degree. So yeah, in basketball, I've been playing, you know, my last year with the university of Saskatchewan, I played five years, excuse me all across uh, North America and my last year with U of S being team captain we won a national championship and was the first in school history wow. after that I went on to play a year professional in the International Basketball League and then um, after that kind of stumbled upon three on three and mm -hmm. we've been doing that for the last four years yeah. and I've been really really fortunate with that to be able to travel the world you yeah. know and, and still you know be able to have that professional basketball career yeah. but still have you know a career and being able to take care of my family back yeah. here so so yeah yeah if anyone's just tuning in uh michael linklater you know he plays on the world uh, three on three tour i guess we call it yeah. uh so he goes to different countries different uh, places and he competes in different tournaments um he just got back from where would you come back from? we were at, we were we spent three weeks in europe so we first went out, out to berlin yeah. in germany then we headed over to uh Sibiu, which is in romania mm -hmm. we stopped in bucharest for a bit and then we finished off in prague czech republic wow jeez so he's been all over the world his passion has taken him taken him where he wanted to be you know he, who would have thought right like started from nothing you know and uh just kept going with it. We have a question here saying, why did you start playing the sport of basketball? It's it's interesting uh, why I started playing. There was a fresh court. So I went to school at St. Mary's. The school was built in 1912. Playground was a little run down. One recess, we come outside and there was a fresh basketball court paved. Yeah. So everyone comes out and some of the older kids were playing. I had never touched a basketball in my life at that point. I was more of a soccer player. Yeah. And so, Everybody kind of gathered around the court and it created this environment and this atmosphere. And then everybody was watching the older kids play back and forth and I was watching and yeah. some of the things that these older kids were doing was really cool. And I was yeah. like, you know, that's something I'd like to, yeah. to give a try. And it just yeah. kind of became the the culture. You know, yeah. some of the northern communities have a volleyball culture. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, and there's some small towns that have a basketball culture. There's others with hockey. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. the culture of the area. Yeah. So for our school, basketball kind of became the culture with this new court. So oh. I just decided to pick it up and yeah, yeah. I was fortunate enough to stick with it and yeah and it took you to university and it took you all over the world isn't that crazy do you have any advice for anyone who's maybe trying to get into a college team or a university team you know how were you able to do that yeah well one of the things is what a lot of athletes have to realize who are wanting to get past that high school or get into the next level is that when you're practicing with your teammates or putting in extra practice that's great mm -hmm. but where you're going to see the development is when you're practicing on your own Yes, because yes. if you if you look at it in terms of um, covering distance, let's, mm -hmm. let's make an analogy where we're covering distance. So if you travel together as a group, as yeah. your team, you go so far. Yeah. And now when everybody stops practicing and you keep practicing, yeah. you're increasing your distance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the more practice you put in on your own time, yeah. the better you're going to get. Yeah. Second thing is don't be discouraged. If you get turned down the first time or you're not good enough, you have to continue trying. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of, um, I've seen a lot of uh, players who, who weren't quite developed at the point trying out for a certain team, yeah, yeah. but who are now playing at yeah, the yeah. highest level in Canada, CIS. And I've seen that multiple times. So always sticking with it, making sure that you're putting in the dedication and time. You have to make sacrifices. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of people who want to go out and party and have that social aspect, especially with now. I don't know what it would be like, you know, being yeah. a teenage athlete with all this social media, yeah. you know, and the technology wanting to keep you kind of glued to it. Yeah. You know, it's putting in that extra time, that extra work. And for a route, if you don't get to go to university right off the hop, there's tons of colleges in yeah, Alberta, yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, that a lot of college or university the athletes mm -hmm. go through that path mm -hmm. so they'll attend a, uh, a college in Alberta playing in the ACAC and then they'll develop their skills because they might not quite be ready for the CIS right and CIS for any of you who don't know is the um, university league so like the Huskies will play in the University of Regina mm -hmm. so a lot of the basically the top end right. um, so some kids will even redshirt at the college level mm -hmm. to get that practice time in because if you want to get better you got to be playing with better players so right. if you can get that opportunity it's 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 better for you that's huge yeah uh, you know 
I think every person that I've had a chance and the privilege to interview here today has, has kind of talked about, you know, you talked about culture and how important that was for you. Uh, is there any individuals, you know, uh, beyond your, your family that have really contributed to your success, like maybe a mentor or coach or, or someone in that matter? Yeah, um, there, was a, there was a number of people, like looking back, there was a number of people that helped uh, in, my, in my success, you mm -hmm. know. Obviously, for me, it started at home having that foundation and that support. Yeah. You know, no questions were asked. My parents didn't put me in basketball or force me into it. Yeah. You know, I chose that. So yeah. first off, I found the passion for it. You know, second was having my uncle, Vernon Linklater, who was a, was a world-renowned boxer. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. he was four-time super heavyweight Canadian champ, four-time runner-up. He lost to Lennox Lewis in a split decision, bronze at the Commonwealth Games. Like... Wow. traveled the world yeah, so yeah. there was someone in my family who i could like physically see talk to who has gone around the world yeah. through yeah. sport so yeah. i knew that it was a possibility wow. being able to see that you know having mm -hmm. somebody do that and it's kind of the same thing with the nba now yeah. you know there's a lot of canadians making the nba so being a canadian basketball player yeah, it's yeah. not far-fetched to make the nba right you know so the other thing was i had coaches growing up who gave me certain skills and i was just blessed for them to be able to show me certain things mm -hmm. also to an, an, uh, a great friend uh, gary laplante mm -hmm. you know he used to take me to the states uh, to play in these men's basketball tournaments when I was still in high school. Wow. So I'd be playing against professionals, ex-pros, Division One players. So they're, you know, playing against better competition was able to make me better. So when I came home to play against high school kids after I just finished playing against professionals, yeah, yeah. you know, it really gave me wow. more confidence. So that, uh, Willie Murda was really my main mentor yeah. when it came he's to... A he was a teammate, right? He is my teammate right wow, now. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So he's, he, he's been, you know, there for me to, to see him play and to learn so much from him. Yeah. You know, he was one of the guys who kind of gave me the confidence to be able to let me know that, you know, I could play at a higher level. Right, right. That's huge. I, know, I think that's really amazing to anyone who's watching right now and might be able to think, not even just your athletic life, but in your personal life. I think that one of the key messages I take from Mike is his foundation is so. You know, when you have a strong foundation, it's kind of like when you're building a building, that foundation has to be solid so you can keep building and building and building and making it higher and higher, right? So uh, let's go back to one of your most recent campaigns that you, I think you founded, the uh, Boys with Braids. Yeah. So tell us about that. Yeah. So Boys with Braids kind of came about um, after I had had my children. You know, I have I have uh, t two boys who, who I grow their hair in my in my my two girls, they look a little more South American, so they don't really get uh, the, the stereotypes or the racism, you know, that my boys face, especially mm -hmm. with long hair. Yeah. And then my oldest, uh, Dante, you know, he has short hair. But my boys were coming home and telling me, you know, that they were getting teased, that their hair was getting pulled, they were getting called a girl, they were telling their teacher, mm -hmm. all of these things. And it just brought me back to my childhood and realizing, you know what, you know, after two decades, yeah. nothing has changed in mm -hmm. the school systems. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing has changed with mainstream culture about, you know, indigenous men wearing long hair. Yeah, yeah. You know, so the thing with that was understanding that, okay, yes, I've gone to their classroom multiple times mm -hmm. and explaining to the teachers, okay, this is that. So it, it, it it's almost like putting out grass fires. Mm -hmm. And the way I say it is, is it was like, try, it's, it's, trying to stop a freight train with a BB gun. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. going to each and every one of my kids' classroom is only targeting a tiny group. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I realized that, you know, there needed to be a, a bigger platform mm -hmm. in order to, one, educate the general public about, you know, Indigenous men and mm -hmm. having long hair. Two, to help encourage young boys who are going through this struggle because if there's, uh, if you see a young boy with a braid, I guarantee you there's a, there's a time in his life that he wants to cut his hair because mm -hmm. of the teasing, the ridicule, the racism that he's dealing with. Right. So to create a platform where we could show a lot of indigenous role models who are in the community with long hair as grown-ups to share their stories to these young men yeah. who are going through this difficult journey. Yeah. So I wanted to create something. So I created Boys with Braids. And, you know, it was one. It was the help of, of, of Cecil, who is a police officer out in Regina. Mm -hmm. He... 
really wanted to to take on the initiative of the social media platform and you know it's with his his help mm -hmm. and i give him all the credit for really helping to make this thing yeah. become it's huge national thing now. It's international yeah. you know wow. there's there's Jeez. been boys with braids uh events and gatherings in, in the united states across canada and the reason that I didn't have a sponsor for it or something is because I didn't want anybody to have a name over it. Yeah. Nobody has ownership over it. Right. I don't claim ownership over it. Right. What it's there is to help the young boys yeah. who are going through. So if anybody out there wants to host a Boys With Braids event, you know, you're know, you able to do it on your own within your community. Mm -hmm. You don't need you know, to be bringing out outside sources or whatnot, but you're more Absolutely. than able to. No, I definitely, I remember we had a conversation about um, Probably a year and a half ago, and I, I we mentioned this about. I was telling you, my, I'm I'm growing my son's uh, hair out. Uh, it's it's uh, almost up to his butt, you know. Um, and uh, I'm just I wanted to get from a local champion's perspective how he's able to overcome being bullied and teased, you know. Because I, I guarantee most people have gone through those, those phases, and especially when, like Michael just said, when you have a braid and uh, being Aboriginal, especially in, in Canada, you're you're almost it's inevitable to get uh, stereotyped and uh, you know, had a lot of negative uh, stereotypes thrown your way, and uh, I'm I'm worried about that with my own son right now. So uh, I'm trying to make him feel comfortable with his hair, um, and uh, hopefully eventually we'll, we'll introduce him to you. I'll show him on this video, and hopefully anyone who's watching this video, show with show it to as many people as you can, because we have a local role model, a local celebrity, and a local champion who's taking us to the international stages. So. I want to say thank you so much for uh, having uh, coming here today, Michael, and sharing your story. Is there any last words of encouragement to anyone out there who might be telling themselves right now that uh, I'm not sure I can do this? You know, I, I maybe they just need an extra word of encouragement. What would you say to them? You know, I think the last time we we had a chat, and it's something that I really encourage. And I'm a big believer of the power of your mind. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of a lot of us don't realize. How powerful you know our thoughts are right you know because our thoughts become reality mm -hmm. you know so if we're constantly thinking that we're not we're not worthy we're not capable yeah. you know all of these negative thoughts yeah. you know that's what we project into reality and because we believe yeah. that we're not able to do it it yeah. becomes reality and it's because we're living our own lives right you know throughout my entire career as a basketball player I was always told you know the negative things too short you know not good enough, all of everything that I wasn't. Mm -hmm. But if I would have listened to any of them, I wouldn't be where I am. Right. You right. know, and what I did was just be able to take what people were saying yeah, and yeah. I turned that as as fuel for my fire. So it's really boils down to what you believe. Mm -hmm. If you believe that you're gonna make it and that you're gonna do something great, you're absolutely right, and that's what's gonna happen. Awesome. Those are very powerful words here, ladies and gentlemen. We have time for about two more questions, so we'll check out the uh, the feed right now, we have a guy saying, Jeremy's saying, do you take vitamins? If you do, um, what kind of company do you take them from? Um, back, well, I did a bit of research uh, a little while ago. Currently, right now, I'm not taking vitamins. Um, what, I, what I do is just, you know, do my best to eat as healthy as possible. You know, not saying that I'm that I'm an angel when it comes to food. You know, yeah. sometimes I'm still eating pizza or yeah. getting drive through quickly. So um, I just make just make uh, smart decisions. A lot of greens. Yeah. But um, when I was taking vitamins, I was taking it from a, a company called Usana. Mm. Uh, Usana Health Sciences. Um, I was doing a bit of research on their company, and yeah. you know, it's a network marketing company. I was yeah. one of the um, distributors to help with that but doing the research you know the the founder dr myron wentz founded a, a one of the vaccines mm -hmm. kind of got into uh cellular structures and how yeah. to keep a cell alive and mm -hmm. he realized that it came with the proper nutrients mm -hmm. so a lot of the vitamins out there actually it's a great question yeah the ones that you can go buy off the shelf some of them don't actually dissolve and oh. there is no um governing body to regulate vitamins so me and you could grab a gummy bear you know sprinkle a little bit of sugar on it and say it's a vitamin yeah so nobody out there really regulates that industry so wow. if you look for fda approved um certain things like they go through these these packaging systems like yeah. do a little bit of research into the vitamins you want to take yeah 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 thank you very much mike hopefully it answer your question there jeremy um let's see who uh we got some colleagues saying boys with braids, fist pump, thumbs up. Uh, Jason Takita saying, good job, gentlemen. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, my last question for Mike before we, we, uh, we wrap it up here. Um, Mike, is there, has there been any, 
you know, aside from the, what you share with us as viewers, is there one other turning point in your life where things could have went a totally different way and something just changed you that, you know, maybe no one else knows about? Hmm. You know, I, I, I really seen the fork in the road mm -hmm. when I was a teenager, mm -hmm. uh, 13. Mm -hmm. 13 was the way where I was kind of on the fence. I was a rebel. Rebel in terms of, you know, having a little bit more of a vocal opinion towards my parents right. and thinking I knew what was best. Yeah. So I think it was the my like that teenage year I could have went either way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in terms of a turning point, I think there's been there's been a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, there's been numerous times. I mean, even my birth, mm -hmm. you know, the plan my mother had was to give me up for adoption right. the moment I was born. So, you know, if Maria didn't get in touch with her, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today. Right. You know, if the, the culture wasn't instilled in me, I wouldn't be here where I am today. Yeah. You know, there's been numerous, numerous things, but I can't really put my, my thumb on A bunch of little things yeah. just kind of, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. Wow. But one of the things kind of uh, leaving off on a, a good note here that I want to share with everyone is that you have to remember, you know, people are going to remember you. Mm -hmm on how you made them feel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so when we go to certain places or when I'm traveling around the world, I'm always making sure that, you know, I'm being very courteous, generous, polite, and yeah. just, you know, being accepting. Yeah. You know, and yeah, just, yeah. just making sure that you're not leaving off on a bad foot with people. Right. You know, because when you think about even your educators, your mm -hmm. teachers, mm -hmm. you're not gonna remember what teacher taught you uh, algebra or how to spell or whatnot right but you can remember the teachers that you really like because how they made you feel exactly yeah. you know so just around being just being around uh, mm -hmm. different people just make sure you're aware of how you're treating them yeah yeah thank you so much Frank for your time uh, Mike is a very busy individual he's all over the place he's also a motivational speaker so uh, if anyone wants to reach out to you Mike how can we find you um, I'm on Facebook uh, Michael Linklater I, I'm also run basketball camps as well in clinics, individual training. So if anybody's interested what, from that, forgot about that. What's your company called? Uh, I created the company called uh, Prime Basketball Development, yeah. and yeah. the website is primebasketball.ca. Yeah. If anyone is interested for camps, I have a few lined up uh, for the September, October months nice. coming up from different communities. I've already been contacted, so starting to book up pretty quickly. Cool. Um, taking off to uh, Geneva, Switzerland for another three on three tournament uh, on Wednesday. Wow. So um, it's, it's, it's been busy. Busy yeah. guy. Wow. He's everywhere. So he's running basketball camps. He's speaking. He's all over the world playing basketball and he's also working at the White Buffalo Youth Lodge here in Saskatoon, helping inner city youth kids to become successful. So thank you so much for, for coming in, Mike. Hopefully you guys got a lot of value from that today. Share it with your friends, share it with someone in need, and uh, hopefully Mike inspired someone today, which he's obviously inspired me and hopefully as well with everyone who's tuning in. So thank you guys very much. Have a great day. You guys are amazing.